Now, before I start this video, I'm only going to say the name of the company once, and I'm going to say it all the way at the end of this video. You may ask why? Well, I don't want to get demonetized because the company's name is very similar to a dirty word. And I've read somewhere that if you say a word similar to that, um, you will get demonetized. And so I'll say it all the way at the end. I'm only going to show the box and tell you what the product's name is, which is the Fulla. Um, here you can see the product's name in a picture. Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. So today we're going to talk about this. This is the Fulla E from a company we shall not mention until the end of this video. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, co it's a company based in the US of A in Corpus Christi, Texas. Now I didn't get my version from Texas, all the way from Texas. No, I got it from the importer from the EU, and which is based over here in the Netherlands. And as a matter of fact, I found out that it was just well down the road from here. Um, so it was very near. Um, which is nice to see, but let's get back to the Fuller. Now there have been several updates the last couple of years of the Fuller. Now I have the latest version, which is the Fuller E or the Fuller 4. Um, the Fuller, the previous version of the Fuller had the excellent AKM digital to analog converter. So I'm rather sad that I didn't get my hands on that one. But this is the Fuller 4 and it set me back 189 uh, euros, uh, whereas our American friends only have to pay, where is it, 109 dollars. So it's a lot more expensive over here in Europe. Now when buying the Fuller E, you also get the option to buy an additional power supply. But I must warn you, if you get one of these, you do not have to buy the additional power supply. Uh, because the USB port on your computer, maybe not all devices, will provide more than enough power for the device to function. Maybe if you use it on your phone or something, you may need the extra power supply. The device itself isn't that big, but it feels very sturdy, heavy and well built. It has some rubber padding on the bottom, so it won't go wobbly all on your desk. The volume knob is large and feels great. The holes in there are for ventilation, but even when I use it with my 250 ohm Biodynamic DT990 Pro, it doesn't even get warm. On the front you will see a mic input and a headphone input. The input uses a 3.5mm jack and the output uses the bigger 6.35mm. There is a 35 to 6.35mm jack plug converter thingy included, which is nice. On the back you will find, from left to right, a preamp output so you can use it with your powered speakers. And then you can find an optical out to connect your TV or any other device. Then you have the additional power connector and last but not least the USB power or and data input. Now when we look at these specifications, it is, well, at first glance rather empty, but when you take a close look, you will see that there are some quality components in there. The DSP or Digital Signal Processor is a chip made by C-Media, the CM6635. Now this chip was released seven years ago in 2015 and has USB 2.0 full speed and I2S for both the digital to analog converter and the analog to digital converter. The DSP also has an inbuilt DAC and ADC, but they are both bypassed to use a separate ADC and digital to analog converter. And the digital to analog converter is the marvelous ESS Sabre ES9018K2M, a 32-bit, 384 kHz and DSD256 of pure raw processing power with a total harmonic distortion of minus 120 decibels it is amongst the best digital to analog converters out there it is capable of 32 bits and 384 kilohertz and internally uses the hyperstream to eliminate jitter a form of distortion now the Saber is one of my very favorite digital to analog converters and is the basis of one of the very first videos that I made for this channel. 
Sadly, the op amp cannot be changed. Now, I like swappable op amps. Using the Burson Audio V5 op amp would have been nice. But hey, you can't have it all. Now the op amp used is the Opa 1654. Now for all of you who don't understand any Dutch, Opa in Dutch means grandfather, so it's rather strange to read Opa there. But overall, this op amp is a really good overall performer. For the analog to digital converter, you'll find the PCM1808 from Texas Instruments. And according to them, the PCM1808 is a high performance, low cost, single chip stereo analog to digital converter. It is capable of 24 bits with a maximum of 96 kilohertz. Now it may not be the best analog to digital converter, although it is very good. Um, my friends aren't interested in the sweet, delicate and intricate tones of my voice when playing a hectic game. They just want to hear my voice. And that's exactly what this ADC does. So overall a great list of components and I'm really anxious to listen to them in the listening sessions. So let's head over there. Now I've been listening to the Fuller E for about two days now, not the usual one hour listening sessions. And why? Well, I wanted to know if I was correct in what I was hearing. And this is what I found. The middles and the highs were nice, uh, well rounded, uh, rather nicely placed, but maybe a bit too rounded. It felt as if the Fuller E almost forgot to finish all frequencies and it, well, it just dumped on frequencies like, well, uh, it, it had to be done. It, it, there wasn't uh, that much energy in it. Also, I found that the bass was nice and oomphy and was a real emphasis, which is interesting because the, it is a gaming digital to analog converter and usually gaming cards are well, very well in the highs and the middles and not so much in the bass section. So that was a really definite plus point. Now the sound stage wasn't what I was hoping for. It wasn't well placed, it was as if it didn't know where to place all the instruments or where the explosions or the bullets or whatever were supposed to be coming from. It was uh, as if it just didn't know. So what can I say after two days of listening to the Fuller? Well, I just didn't like it. It just wasn't good enough, it wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be. Uh, if I have to give it a rating, I'd give it at best an average plus. And now for the Rightmark audio analyze results. So where to start? Um, I just tested it with weighted results, unweighted results. I tested it on 24 bits, 192 kilohertz, 32 bits, 384 kilohertz. I used two test benches just to make sure that I got all the results correct. And in the end, all the results, well, I could reproduce them every single time. And those results aren't that pretty. Let's start with the good and then the bad and then I'll finish with the ugly. Now these results are going to be the 32 bits and 384 kilohertz results weighted because that, that was slightly the best result that I got. The good is that the frequency gets an excellent woohoo, nice going. Now this is what I want to see. But check out the discrepancy between the left and the right channel. On a hi-fi product this should be exactly the same and there's well no excuse for this. Now the volume on the left channel is just slightly louder than the right channel. The bad are the averages it gets. The dynamic range, the total harmonic distortion in percentage and the inter intermodular distortion plus noise in percentage and the intermodular distortion at 10 kHz in percentage are all average at best. And then the ugly, three pores. One for the noise level, the total harmonic distortion plus noise in decibels and the stereo crosstalk. Overall, the general performance is an average. Now, boy, oh boy, this is bad. Okay, and now for my conclusion. I'm only going to say the company's name uh, once. Um, when I first saw the company's name, <coughs> she eat. Please, you two, be nice to me. Uh, my first thought was, well, here's another company that thinks by giving something a rebellious name does make it look cooler. And in the end, I'm not far off.
So let's go over the goods and the bads. The build quality is really good. I mean, it's properly built. It feels heavy, sturdy. The volume knob is nice and big. Um, and there isn't anything wrong with the outer casing. It was just a nice product to see. Another cool thing is, of course, that it has a microphone input. It has even has a separate analog to digital converter. So let's head over to the bad. Um, as I said before, the listening sessions, they were average, average plus. So uh, kind of meh. And I was well confused by this. Um, a product of this price should sound a lot better. The Rightmark audio analyzer results were also average and that for a product of this price. Now I checked and rechecked and did everything over and over just to see if those results that I got were correct. And in the end they were correct. Now the fact that the balance was just slightly off is just a real miss for me. I mean for a quality product you could expect that the balance volumes were, uh, so the volumes were exactly the same. It did get better after uh, listening to the device for about a day, but still it was off. Uh, when I started the first test, when I opened the box, it was even more of almost one decibel now, and that is audible. So you may have guessed it already. I'm not going to recommend the Fuller E. And why not? Well, I've just told you all the bats and there's just too many bats to warrant such a high price. I mean, uh, almost 190 euros for a product, well, that it's performance mediocre. Um, just to make sure that you understand why I don't like this product, I've also compared it to the Meridian Explorer. It's that one over there. Uh, I've also made a video about that one. And if you compare the two, they're in the same price range. Yes, that one has, a, the full, he has a microphone input, the, uh, the Meridian Explorer doesn't. But just to compare the results, you can see that the Meridian is way, way, way better. And every single test, it just outperforms the Fuller E. So in my opinion, uh, the Fuller E is just a sound card or digital to analog converter, analog to digital converter, gaming deck, whatever you're supposed to call it, is made to look cool, but performs very mediocre. So with this conclusion, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.